Mexico City, vivid metropolis and cosmopolitan city. Situated on a plateau in the central highlands at an altitude of 2,286 meters, where the food is spicy and the tequila flows freely. The city's fascinating history is reflected in both its art and architecture. Age-old charm, Indian roots and elegant buildings. The Palacio Nacional is on the eastern side of Zocalo Square. It replaced the former palace of the great Aztec king Montezuma. Since 1562, the home of royalty and today, the President of Mexico. Until the Spanish conquest, the Templo Mayor was the setting of coronations and human sacrifice. Its foundations have now been fully excavated. There's a striking contrast between the excavations and the colonial buildings. The remains of the walls within which thousands of priests once lived are now only a few steps from the buildings of the Spanish conquerors. Construction of the country's largest cathedral, the Catedral Metropolitana, took 250 years. The lower section is quite plain, but the upper section is of Baroque and neoclassical design. Spanish administrative buildings and private houses in the heart of the city have replaced the temples of ancient Mexico. This has resulted in a synthesis of both old and new architectural styles. The architecture in Mexico City is a reflection of its colorful past. The park Capultepec extends for five square kilometers with museums, a zoological garden and several entertainment facilities. Cute squirrels live within the park's small forests. A journey by train through this splendid botanical garden is a captivating experience. The large park once supplied the Aztec realm with fresh drinking water. It also served as a royal hunting ground with summer residents and gardens. The Museo Nacional contains some of the most important discoveries of the pre-colonial epoch. This is surely one of the greatest museums in the world. Each exhibition is dedicated to a specific period or culture. They include the counterparts of temple complexes and a collection of prehistoric bones. The hunting scenes are particularly realistic, and scenes of everyday life highlight the struggle for existence in bygone times. On various temple walls, colorful stone reliefs illustrate the story of the gods. The transportation of colossal heads is also well illustrated. The highly developed culture of the country's primeval inhabitants is described in vivid detail.
characteristic of Mexican culture are these massive and highly decorated stone sculptures. They were also used for human sacrifice in the name of the Aztec earth goddess, Coatlicue. This 24-ton stone calendar is one of the main features of the exhibition. It was created during the rule of Montezuma. The great cultures of Teotihuacan, the Toltecs, the Aztecs and the Maya are exhibited in numerous rooms. The many unique exhibits of various epochs are displayed in 12 halls and several exhibition rooms. The museum also contains the paintings of many contemporary artists. Artists such as Bustos, Coronel and O'Higgins are indicative of the present indigenous and their modern approach. And there are even more gods. The museum exhibits are well detailed and masterly works of art. Detailed replicas of small temples and ancient lifestyles complete the historic scene. The Aztecs were strongly influenced by nature and created very precise solar and lunar calendars. They calculated a cycle of 52 years that represented life since the Ice Age. Within these cycles, great civilizations rose and fell. Some lived in isolation, but most interacted with each other as far as to Peru. The first traces of human existence came with the arrival of Stone Age man in around 20,000 BC. This developed in several stages. During the Archaic period between 6,000 and 2,000 BC, the first settlements appeared in the high valleys of Mexico. The pre-classical period saw the arrival of the Olmecs, the classical period, the Teotihuacan, who dominated central Mexico between 300 until 900 AD. This was followed by the Toltecs and the Mixtecs. In 1345, several cities were ruled by the Aztecs. In 1519, Cortes landed near Veracruz, and from there, the Spaniards destroyed many of the country's final cities. Inaugurated in 1964, the museum is a masterpiece of contemporary museum architecture. An elevator ascends the Torre Latino Americano, a 177-meter-high earthquake-proof tower that was built in 1958. A viewing platform provides a wonderful panoramic view, including the Palacio de Bellas Artes and the Juarez Monument.
This large and lively city has attracted many immigrants. Each day, around two and a half thousand come here to find work in the metropolis of Mexico City. With a population of 25 million, the city can also be an oasis of tranquility. Street musicians and flower sellers are part of the daily scene. Two thousand two hundred meters above sea level, Mexico City is surrounded by five thousand meter high mountains. The facade of the Casa de los Azulios is covered with tiles in Puebla style. In the twentieth century, the Sanborns shopping center was established here. Built in 1596, the colonial residence of the Count of Orizaba was covered with blue, white and yellow tiles in 1793. Exquisite detail dominates the house. Richly decorated glass doors, handrails and lamps exude great elegance, including a stylish restaurant in the courtyard. It was in this house in 1914 that the revolutionaries Pancho Villa and Emiliano Zapata met after the victorious march through the city. This is a place of tasty food served in an attractive setting. For the Art Nouveau Epilacio de Bellas Artes, Carrara marble was imported from Italy. Today it features the works of numerous Mexican artists and also performances by the National Ballet. Examples of pre-Spanish culture such as the heads of Jaguar warriors adorn the facade. The spirit of the revolution is also depicted by the country's Indian heritage. Countless green Volkswagen Beetles dominate the streets. They're the city's taxis and extremely popular with sightseers. The city's motorists patiently endure endless columns of relentless traffic. A relaxed journey is often interrupted by the noisy horns of angry drivers. Modern Mexico is full of futuristic architecture. The use of color is characteristic of Mexican artistic flair. The small but attractive Alameda Central Park has a dramatic past. During the Inquisition, many perished here at the stake. The Universidad Nacional Mexico is the largest and oldest university in Latin America. Thousands of mosaic stones decorate the walls of the main library. Founded in 1533, it was originally housed in several of the city's buildings. Today's campus was built in the 1950s.
This natural stone mosaic created for the 1968 Olympics is most impressive. The streets are full of colorful hustle and bustle. The lively spirit of the Aztecs finds its expression in everything, even in the simple objects of everyday life. The swimming gardens, also known as Jochemilco, or the place where flowers grow, are a popular attraction for the inhabitants of Mexico City. Mexicans like to celebrate much and often. On request, swimming party boats can be decorated with floral birthday congratulations. For the revolutionaries that emerged from the barren mountains, the trees, the glimmering water of the canals and the colorful clothing of the people must have been an amazing sight. Despite this wonderful setting, it's wise to remain cautious. The turbulent water of the canals is unsuitable for swimming. Helping hands and the obligatory life belt are always available. The age-old traditions of Mexico's inhabitants have changed very little. Each season of the year determines the daily life of the rural population. On the boats there is dancing, laughter and good food. Mariachi bands accompany the lively passengers on the small waterways of the swimming gardens. The Aztecs built the chinampa from reed on which they cultivated vegetables and grain. Thus originated a mosaic of fields and small waterways. They filled rafts and reed wickerwork with earth and plants and secured them below the shallow water of the lake. Soon the roots of the plants took hold in the lake bed. Flowers are an important part of daily life. The blossoms of the jasmine and magnolia had much significance for the Aztecs. They were reserved solely for the nobility. Souvenir stalls display interesting arts and crafts. Colorful woven fabrics and pottery are very popular with the tourists. There's a good assortment of souvenirs. The sombrero is Mexico's national hat. It's usually richly decorated and provides good protection from the scorching sun. This is an ideal place to observe the daily life of the local inhabitants. Corn, beans, potatoes, wheat and vegetables are on sale here. The array of colorful fresh products looks extremely appetizing. There's a wonderful combination of color, aroma and sounds. An intriguing variety of dolls is created with much dexterity and artistic skill and exhibited in the stalls. Numerous boats await the next passengers at the landing stage. The return journey is even more fun.
The Sun Pyramid is one of the greatest building achievements of ancient times. It's 65 meters high and its sides are each more than 213 meters long. Teotihuacan is 50 kilometers northeast of Mexico City. Its harmonic association with the cosmos is completed by the Moon Pyramid. The city's ground plan was designed in such a way that it relates directly to the movement of the stars and to the hills on the horizon. Covering 20 square kilometers, Teotihuacan once had a population of 200,000. Large areas of this huge city remain undiscovered to the present day. On both sides of the main street, the Camino de los Muertos, are the Edificos Superpuestos, buildings that over the centuries were built one on top of the other. Excavation began in 1918 when the Mexican archaeologist Manuel Gamio uncovered the first pyramid. The Pyramid of the Feathered Snake was used for sacrifice and ceremonial burials. It was dedicated to the god of war, dawn and water. Pictures of snakes and jaguars once decorated the walls of this mysterious pyramid. They are typical examples of Olmec art. The stonemasonry was highly detailed and precise. Hundreds of workers undertook the creation of the beautiful stonework. Teotihuacan was a marketplace, a center of art and ritual ceremonies. At its zenith in 500 AD, it was as large as Rome. In front of the pyramids were large squares. Many thousands of people gathered here for religious ceremonies. In 1988, UNESCO attributed this complex as being one of the most important cultural centers of mankind. For the Aztecs of later times, sacred Teotihuacan was the seat of the gods. The elders stated, those who die here are transformed into gods. The author Pablo Neruda once said, no other land on earth possesses such remarkable human profoundness as Mexico and its inhabitants.